Hello, hello, hello. Hello there. Yay! How's it going? How are you? Very good, thank you. You sound nice and lively. Mark, I've got to the point now where I, mm. I genuinely don't know who I am, what I am yep. or what I'm doing yep. anymore. I hear you. I am that every, absolutely exactly the same every single day. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> I'm a bit of a, a a bit of a zombie, but it's been, it's been good. It's been been keeping super busy. How are you? Yeah, really well? to be honest, yeah, there are days like getting into work where you feel a little bit better if you're not the only yeah. zombie because <laughs> because I was in the back of the taxi and I'm like I worry about being worried, so I'm like I can't oh, I can't remember what I'm doing or and then the taxi driver instead of turning into work he actually took a left turn into Tesco and I thought oh. it's not just me no, no nobody knows not. what they're doing anymore <laughs> oh well how long can we get away with this I don't know how long we'll be able to use these excuses oh yeah it's lockdown oh yeah it's uh, you know, COVID. <laughs> yeah not much longer how have you actually been in all the chaos of everything that's been going on yeah, similar to a lot of people. I mean, you know, it's a bit strange. You have to make a lot of adjustments. I mean, we had all of our gigs cancelled, just every single one of them. So I think that was about 40, 40 or 50 gigs down the pan. Um, but I, I appreciate everybody's been affected in a, in a, you know, in some way. So, you know, we just made the best of it. And, you know, uh, and they're all being, fortunately, I think a lot of them are being rescheduled. So hopefully it will get Yay! back to normal. You yes. see, that's where I should have had some sound effects. It was the boo of them being cancelled <laughs> and the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last time that we spoke, um, it was you and Ben uh, mm -hmm. causing trouble, as per usual. Um, as you, were, you were getting ready for the Boys Are Back tour, and I remember yes. that had sold out in four minutes. Yeah. Four yeah, minutes. well, actually, no, the, the, the um, I'm going to sound like I'm bragging now, but it was the A1 tour that sold out in four minutes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, forget damage. The boys are back. The boys are back. The boys are back. To all that. I don't know. I sold out in like five or six minutes or something. But, but, um, <laughs> Say yeah, it again. That... Go on. We'll just hope if nine one one and damage are listening, they realise there is a two minute difference in sellout time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It, it makes all the difference. <laughs> um, you know, uh, just as as the size of your logo on the poster. I mean, I mean, apparently, that's a thing. You know, where you put on the poster and all that business. Um, but yeah, that was. I remember when we were chatting. Uh, chatting. Me and Ben. Were, went down to London and, and uh, it, that was a great tour and that was actually the tour that we were on when things came to a you know uh, a sudden halt and we had to cancel the rest of the tour unfortunately we were it, it was it was at that point um, where it was about four o'clock in the uh, afternoon the gig was due to start at six or seven and they were holding the doors because they didn't know whether we would be able to go ahead with the gig or not and it was that near the mark and we we all the bands had a, a chat because we were actually concerned at the time that it might seem irresponsible to go on stage when the, all of this is is breaking out but we decided because the, the everybody was already queuing outside the building we, you know we couldn't you know the show must go on as they say so we did the show that night that was in Milton Keynes on the Monday and that was the last one we did. I know the new single is Stop the Show, but obviously as, right. you, as you listen to it, it's amazing, by the way. To steal the show, show, they're never gonna know, no, they're never gonna stop the show. Oh, it is. It's so uplifting. It's such a positive message. Was that when you'd started thinking or do, when you were writing, did you go back to that exact moment? Because actually, I know it's called Stop the Show, but it's more about yes. the show's got to go on. We've got to get on. Yes, you're absolutely right. The message is, is uh, you can't stop the show. The show must go on. And I actually started writing this before the lockdown. And, and it's funny how sometimes you look back at a song and go, wow, that is really... Are relatable to now and it and, and and i noticed some of the lyrics that i'd put um you know uh the curtain ain't coming down let everyone know that we're back in town and it was just it was it was just it felt like a song that needed to be released now i was planning on holding it back for a1 for the for, for our next album but i thought you know what i think the the timing is key uh with some songs and i just felt with theaters opening up again uh, and 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 performers like myself have been struggling a bit and having a bit of bit of a difficult time, and I just wanted to to write an anthem that was just you know saying, hey, you know, you can't stop the show. Things will carry on and we'll get back to normal. And that's pretty much the message of this song. Yeah, well, it's the opposite for my listeners. Stop the show is usually a request for me to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Never. So 
caught in the middle. Oh, these lads are ace, aren't they? Never out of the charts in the late 90s, early 2000s as well. Yeah, they were literally blocking the charts, bagged themselves a Brit, and I caught up with Mark Reed from A1. I tell you what, that's just going to be stuck in your head all day. Caught in the middle. Is it so different now you're gone? I thought it'd be easier once more. playing the piano when you're three. That's right. Three and years old. And who was that yeah. through, mum or dad? Um, uh, my mum was uh, still drumming when she was pregnant with me. And I know that sounds like such a line that people say, but it's 100% true. She was still gigging. So I, I, I this sounds like such a cliche, but I did have music sort of drummed into me from an early age. And um, <laughs> I forgive you for that one, but I know what sorry. you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So I and my, my nan was one of the 60s Tiller girls. I don't know if you're familiar with those because you'll be you're far too young to know who they are but they're 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 like a dance <laughs> troupe do you know i'm so troupe. glad it isn't ben today because you are like the opposite of ben ben would be <laughs> going oh do you remember the tiller girls you know in the 60s you see you bring the charm mark that's why you're always welcome back <laughs> <laughs> well thank you i really appreciate that thank you so my 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 nan uh rosemary uh lovely rosemary who can still kick her legs like that and uh just the same so and my my granddad was a, a circus before Former, as well, a strong man in the circus years wow. and years back. So, so that's why I kind of infused a lot of the kind of uh, sh- greatest showman elements. I mean, I don't think it's particularly hidden in the song and the presentation for the song that there is definitely a greatest showman in influence. But also, I, 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 I think there's some influences from some of my favourite bands um, like ELO, uh, Take That, the Scissor Sisters. It's got a bit of a Mika vibe as well. So it's it's just it's the, the key is it's a feel good song. I wanted I wanted to write a song that was uplifting. Because I'm, I'm not particularly political. I, I just want music to, to, to raise people's spirits. That's what it's all about. I wish you'd have told me before you were welcomed on this show because I only cover news and politics, I'm afraid. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I'm interested in, Mark, to be fair. (laughs) No, with yours, I think it's exactly what we need to hear right now because we've been completely saturated with doom, gloom, misery. And it was probably about last August or September that um, I was in Shielding for five months. And there was one particular weekend I said to my dad, uh, well, I didn't stay at home. Me and my sister went back home, so we were all together Mm. and i said to dad i can't my brain can't take anymore i said i don't want to watch any more news we know Mm -hmm. what's going on enough now but i think when we had that when we hit that long uh, december third lockdown i was like i've hit a wall now i i I just and i actually kind of went the other way and i just didn't i I, uh, wow you know i know so many people were affected like that but fortunately i i think you know when they talk about learning new skills in the lockdown um, I actually learned how to make a music video and, and I and I kind of think it, it's okay. It's how, not bad. It, no, it is good. And I wanted to ask you a question, right? It's like dressing mm. up outfits go. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's proper oh, fancy yeah. dress. It's oh. proper, like, grab grab some clothes on eBay. You know, other auction sites oh. are available. But, um, yeah. No, but the funny thing is with the outfit, with the costume that you've got on, obviously the circus yeah. ringmaster in the video, mm. uh, I don't want to sound too weird here, but the only fancy dress outfit that I've got in my attic, right, is the female version of that, the circus ringmaster with a huge big whip. (laughs) Well, I I, I left the whip out. (laughs) But you're telling me this now? Yeah, so, you know... Three weeks ago when I was making the video and I could have done with some, you know, extras in it, you know... To make it because I, I got sick of the sight myself. I we mean, could have done a his and so hers much. version, but you know, it, when you tour exactly. this, can you just bear that yep. in mind? I have got I, the outfit ready. I definitely will. <laughs> maybe leave the whip at home. I don't know. Maybe Ben would like it if you bought it. Oh, let's, let's leave. Uh, leave do you the know, every time I see Ben, it's absolute carnage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, apart from all the amazing stuff and the global success with A1, your career uh, has been fantastic. You know, when we've heard that you played piano from three and been on stage from seven, throughout this has kind of unfolded all these amazing experiences yeah. uh, with you writing and producing as well. And didn't 
you uh, did you co-write the Help for Heroes, the British Legion song? Yeah, I've, I've written a song that um, all the proceeds went to Help for Heroes and British Legion. I was very proud of that. It was called We Will Remember Them. And, and as it happens, that was some lyrics that came from my granddad. I know We Will Remember Them is a very old um, poem, uh, but we, the actual song, um, I was really proud of that. And that came from, you know, sitting down with my granddad. Um, for for our tomorrow, they gave there today, and it's it's it, that's a lovely sentiment, and and super proud of that. And and we we had Robin Gibb, Michael Bolton, Paul Carrick. We had some really great people singing on that song, and um, and yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I feel really fortunate to, that this kind of journey that I started <clears throat> 20 years ago. It's 20 20 years ago this this year that we won the Brit. That's the first time I met you lot, uh, Paul, Christian, Ben, obviously, and yourself, was you just won the best newcomer um, and you all came into Stoke and we were just like, we couldn't contain people. It, it, it was crazy. You were on, you played, I'm looking out the window now, come with me, Mark, come with me. Yeah. I'm looking out the window at BBC Radio Stoke. We've got yeah. the town hall, the Victoria Hall is just behind it. And you played that. I have never heard noise like it your your yeah. mob of fans are crazy loud they they really are and i i remember some of those gigs and you know coming to stoke and coming that way and they were even louder a lot louder than down in the south oh, i have to say <laughs> what and they saying? used to say it's just i don't know what it is just i mean you know they used to say that we we broke certain records with the decibels and all that kind of stuff and i'm sure it's all been obviously been uh, broken again it's a strange record to aspire to isn't it the <laughs> loudest scream on stage but at the time you couldn't hear anything you couldn't hear the music you just heard this massive loud sound you know normally if ben just you know what flicked his curtains or something like that um <laughs> and um it was it was a, an amazing wonderful time and uh, really really grateful for it that was the haircut of the day, wasn't it? Curtains. <laughs> the race, lads. More from A1. You know, they used to say that we, we broke certain records with the decibels and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure it's all been, obviously, been uh, broken again. It's a strange record to aspire to, isn't it? The <laughs> loudest scream on stage. But at the time, you couldn't hear anything. You couldn't hear the music. You just heard this massive, loud sound. You know, normally if Ben just, you know, what flicked his curtains or something like that. Um, <laughs> and um, it was, it was a, an amazing, wonderful time. And uh, really, really grateful for it. And, and and obviously the screams have got a little bit lower pitched and a little bit more reserved as the years have gone. You must have generation. Like, yeah, because uh, I'm 47, right? Don't go on about it. My, my sister is 37 and mm -hmm. she knows I'm talking to you today. And she said, oh, you'll have to tell him. She says, you'll have to tell him. We've stuck, because I, I hoard, well, I'm not a hoarder, but I do keep a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> Nic oh, Nicola said, um, oh, tell him that we've still got all the smash hit stickers um, because she was at school and I was at university so I'd put all of the, the A1 stickers from Smash It's all over my folders, still got them That is amazing that, is a, that, that just doesn't happen anymore does it? Well I don't know what people are putting on their books in school but I'm just saying that seemed like such a thing at the time, magazine stickers and stuff like that but now there isn't any Smash It's is there? It's such a shame that that's all kind of gone but but what fond memories and what great times and and uh, yeah, my, fortunately, my mum's kept all that stuff as well. And every Has now and she? again, we go, we go through the scrapbooks and oh, it's brilliant. It's really great stuff. And, and that's cool. I say, say hello to your sister for me. Oh, I will do. Oh, I think I, I can do it now. Hello, Nicola. Yeah. <laughs> you will have made her day she's probably quite she's a bit of an ebayer so she might want right. your advice on how much do you reckon it'd be worth if she flogged it well the smash it stickers of not you. a lot i'm afraid oh <laughs> <laughs> oh how much am i worth if she flogs me oh i don't know Hopefully are you, you up for something. sale this afternoon <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been amazing it always is catching up with you oh, and your you. your fans have they've just stuck fast all the way along and you must see a different yeah. generation of people now coming along with the kids as well it's amazing it really really is you're absolutely right it's it's great to see you know uh, our fans bringing along their kids to the shows and seeing them wearing the t-shirts and all that sort of stuff so a1 are back out on tour later this year in october and it's called the a game tour uh so which will also be followed with with new music so if anybody wants to come along to those shows um just yeah look it up the a game tour yay see you when we come up that way okay hope so look forward to oh, absolutely <laughs> don't definitely. bring ban <laughs>
No, he'll be there. We'll have fun. It'll be absolutely fun. Look we'll, forward to we'll it. lock him up and leave him in the van outside. <laughs> well, you know what, right? Things will change because he will be baby in tow. <gasps> he will have a baby then. Oh, so, so he might be. Yeah, he might be on the. Yeah, so it'll low, be, it'll more be low changed key. Now. We're all. We're all. Well, I say we're all growing up, but yeah, two of us now, babies, and you know. How are you finding it? I mean that. Well, I, I'm I'm not one of them. It's Paul's got two uh, lovely little girls, and Ben's got a uh, um, I think a son on the way, a boy on the way. I think you're like me. I actually, You're I, like I honestly me. I don't know. I actually don't know. I, I I know they did a reveal, but they did a reveal on their podcast, and yeah, it'll all be changed on the road. It'll be babies, and you know, Gosh. responsible behaviour. It was never for me, but my sister um, has just had a little boy called Oliver, and. Oh. Oh, Mark, I'm so in love with him, but yeah. and I really am. But as soon as the screaming and the sleepless nights, I'm just like, I knew it wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be Uncle Auntie and yeah. just be able to kind of, you know, be the fun one that doesn't have to get too caught up and hopefully doesn't have to change too many nappies. And, you know, I'm sitting with the... producer Tom now, who is a dad, and he's thinking, yeah. Yep, I've got all the hard work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's not easy. Oh, well, <laughs> no, no, I've no doubt. I know it's the sleep, isn't it? It's you know Paul uh, as he's wow because we, when Paul came back in the band his two little girls were still babies and you could just see he was so tired all the time but he, he, maybe that's why he came back in the band was to escape all of that yeah would you say <laughs> but, it was Tom yeah I mean if I had the option I'd do it <laughs> if, you, if you need anyone else in A1 Tom's ready just to escape okay. home excellent excellent <laughs> Mom, to, well, lovely to talking soon. to you thank you so much for your time Cheers, Louise. See you, bye-bye. We got glimpses of you, didn't we, along the way? When I say glimpses, we won't go back to the cover of Attitude. <clears throat> but um, we'd oh, no, seen... That wasn't me. That wasn't me. That was you. No, that was my head on Mark's body. <laughs> Whoa, Mark! <laughs> yeah, that was my head on Mark's body. Actually, I'll tell you something really funny. If you want to go see on, something I'm even more there. revealing... All yeah. you have to do is type into Google. No, don't, don't. You can't say this. No, go on. Ben I'm writing Ad- this ben, down. Go on. Ben Adams, yeah. fake nude. Oh. Fake nude. Ben Adams, nude. fake nude. Now, I didn't do these myself. This is on someone Google. Someone has put my head mm. on some very convincing bodies. The only way that you would know that it's not me is because I would never have that rug. <laughs> 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 you know now everybody in Staffordshire and Cheshire is going, Google, what have I got to put in? The way, I'm glad you've mentioned Google because the dodgy thing that happens with Mark is, and you oh, you obviously probably know this, um, you actually come up as Chopper. I thought, mm, promising. Yeah, I know. Oh, <laughs> but it's not quite what you think, is it? When you go no. Chopper, you go, God, what's this all about? Oh, but it's, uh, well, well yeah. I'd like to say that's a nickname, but no, actually, yeah, that's a, a fella, a bit of a notorious fella in Australia. Don't forget to clear your history. Cheeky boys, that's what they are.